Thanks for tuning in to Beyond C5 TV. Now tonight we have a very special guest for you. Ontario native Mike Patterson is a Sasquatch researcher like no other. His documented interactions with a family of Sasquatch, most notably a young male family member by the name of Nefetia, is nothing short of astonishing. Mike had his first Sasquatch encounter at the age of 10, which at the time traumatized him to the core. Later in life, as an adult, while pursuing his passion of nature photography, he had an epiphany to push through the fear and finally search for what had terrified him as a young boy. On that note, he has stated that he believes they have been observing him for a good part of his life. His first vocal encounter with Sasquatch was on October 25th, 2008. It took about eight months of going into a specific area of Northern Ontario to get this to finally happen. Since then, he has had hundreds of encounters with a family of Sasquatch as well as other individuals and has documented many of these encounters. A good portion of this evidence has been published on his YouTube channel, Sasquatch Ontario, which has videos dating back to 2012. Recently, Mike has had the opportunity to speak in front of a large group of budding young scientists at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. We hope there will be many more of these to come. And now, here is our very fascinating conversation with Mr. Mike Patterson. Enjoy. By the way, con congrats on that talk uh, at Big Masters uh, University. That was just, I watched the whole thing and man, you nailed it. It was really good. Appreciate that. Thanks. Yeah, that, that was the first time I've ever talked in front of an audience. So I was a little <laughs> nervous, but managed to pull it off. So you pulled it off well, man, I got to tell you. And um, I'm just curious, how did that come about uh, exactly? Uh, the the professor there, he teaches a class called, uh, I think it's called Demons, Ghosts, and the Paranormal. Cool. So, so he was, you know, he reached out looking for somebody involved in, in Sasquatch research. And, um, uh, you know, he reached out to me and I jumped on it because something, something I want to, you know, I want to do. It's, I got so much experience at this point. It's insane, right? So. It is, Yeah. So what were the reactions like? So post post uh, post talk, did you get a lot of reactions from the students? Uh, what any any funny questions or any any questions that you've never heard before from any of these uh, students at all? It, it was kind of um, you know in the moment I'm not I'm just I don't even remember what the questions were. I'm just uh, focused. <laughs> yeah, I know my stuff, so I you know it, it's hard to stump me on anything and it. A couple times, though, you know, I, I wasn't sure how to respond. I just said it's complicated. And, um, but for the most part, it was fine. Afterwards, I had a crowd of them around the cast and that. So mm -hmm. they were asking a, a lot of questions after that. And um, then the next day, you know, he did a, a whatever class talking about uh, the presentation and, uh, you know, I convinced some that they exist and, uh, you know, others still don't believe it, which is, you know, obviously not going to convince everybody, but. Uh, yeah. It's one of those but, things. Yeah. Yeah. They, they learn to approach a subject without judgment anyways. So, yeah. that, you know, it's a good thing, right? Yeah, that's what, that, I guess that's what matters. And I mean, having you, having seen you talk in front of a, uh, like, you know, a crowd like that is just, it blew me away because you don't really see that Pe people are so skeptical about this and you know for good reason i understand why i mean i was skeptical when i i'll be totally honest with you mike when i first saw your channel i i've been following you for about i don't know i guess six seven years and when i first saw first saw like heard the vocalizations and everything i was like oh you know but then i listened to it again i was like wait a minute a person can't do that a person can't, you'd have to be a giant person to do that. You have to have lungs the size of a, of a basketball, you know? So, so it's, it, I was convinced at that point, I was like, you know, some people I know, like I, I give them the, your, you know, I, I, I share the channel and they're, they're still like, oh, I don't know, man. I'm like, well, <laughs> dig into it, man, dig into it. You'll see it's, 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 under, it's understandable. You know, I, it's, it's so rare what has been given to me. Yeah. We've had literally mm -hmm. uh, activity on 100% of the visits over 10 years from day one. Yes. 
Wow. And I, I was just there. I actually went a bunch of weeks that we didn't get up there. Dwayne wasn't able to. Um, so I think it was about six weeks, which, which sucked because I, I itched to get up there in the winter because they always give us prints, right? Mm -hmm. um, Neff, still, Neff still hasn't given me his print. But at one point we were out there, I think it's about three o'clock in the morning and we're standing out there. This is our routine. And um we're scanning the snow around us for prints. We're standing on a gravel road, right? Right out front of the cottage. And we're scanning the road. There's no prints there. But just about to go inside. And I take one last look and boom, there's a single print right beside me. And then suddenly there's a few more. And um, I think it was two, it was two, maybe three individuals. And then as I'm looking at them, I got marbles dropping and That's you know, came, came home with another eight marbles. So, that, yeah, it's uh, I think it was actually um, I just had a feeling it was it was the girls, you know, and the family. Mm -hmm. And then um, wow. Neff did vocalize. He, he yelled out uh, at the end of the night, just kind of give me one yell there. Uh, but it was really windy. So actually, I, did, I think. Oh, no, it's not on this computer yet. Sorry. Um, but his voice. Yeah, his definitely uh, changed a little bit. I think he's probably got to be 10 feet tall at this point. Wow. So. Lord. Yeah. 10 feet tall is, a, that's a damn big creature. Wow. wow. Yeah, I, I, I figure his foot is probably upwards around 18 inches at this point. You know, so I, I estimate around 10 feet. That, I mean, and, and it just goes to show that, that, that I mean, they're, they're just, there's no way that they're phys they're 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 100 physical, which means that they live in the forest, they hide behind trees and caves, and I mean, look how big they are, and and how would it be possible for them for a population of them to hide? Like that's why I find I I I really connected with with your with your material because it made it just it clicked. I was like, well, duh, that's why we can't see them. They're they're multidimensional. Damn, you know. Why didn't yeah. I think of that? <laughs> Absolute um, masters of energies and and the, their ability to traverse consciousness, you know, yeah. individually or collectively. Uh, I don't know to what level, but, um, you know, they can make contact in, in dreams, you know, and they're not dreams. They're actual contact, right? So That's, yeah, that is something else. just absolute masters. And and I use that term. Jeff Meldrum really uh, ridiculed me for using that. So now yeah. I use it twice as much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's still around. So, you know. <laughs> oh, he doesn't like me, I tell you. Oh, he doesn't like you. Right? Oh, well, whatever. You know what? I mean, he's missing out because if, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure would, if, if he were to extend, you know, like, going out with you would you bring it out with you at this point or do you, are, would you be like ah no <laughs> there's okay so there's something about when Dwayne and I are together it, the activity's tenfold I, I go to another spot in the same area um, you know to pitch my tent and they show up they always show up uh, I've had walk through um, in camp uh, that have woken me up trees pushed over wood knocking heavy movement i've had a shimmering in front of me uh i was there with a buddy and we had a tarp over us and it was raining and the they pulled a tree branch right down outside of it right in front of us and let it go and um so like all kinds of stuff but vocals are really rare mm. and and i it's not really uh i've never gotten a marble out of thin air there um it's it's a little different how i do things you know there the connection is with Dwayne right so I was brought in to develop that and they've been around him his whole life so really um so, oh yeah so as far as uh yeah he doesn't like Meldrum <laughs> so oh, Dwayne, like Dwayne's, a pri Dwayne's a private guy o only one person um Chris Munch <laughs> who, uh, yes yeah made, that's right yeah yeah he did he made the movie letters from the big man and and some other ones and that and super uh 
you know, beautiful soul. And, and mm -hmm. he spent three nights there and, and he saw, you know, he saw the real stuff. So what was his reaction? <laughs> he, he was just, he was just thrilled, you know, it was, been, yeah. Yeah. When, when we were setting up, uh, he, he was interviewing me up in the forest and it's just the two of us there. And he's, you know, doing something with his camera and suddenly a fist sized rock lands right by my chair and kind of rolls um, to my chair leg. And, and then he reaches for his bag and suddenly there's a banana peel sitting on top of it. And yeah. A marble appeared. And uh, as he was standing in the living room, a marble appeared right in front of it you know, maybe just a couple feet in front of him, four or five feet in the air and dropped to the floor. And, and then I got the one on camera that happened. Yeah. Yeah. I saw that one. Yeah. That's, that's good. He just kind of looks, looks, he looks in one direction and he just kind of like, Oh, bends down. You're like, Oh man, he just saw something there, but that's, that's so cool. That's yeah. I heard it come down. I, I, I actually still frame that shot. I caught the trail of it. Um, oh really and, and we could hear them it was so like it's so still up there some nights you know you can hear them um when we were sitting in chairs you hear them walking around us right wow you can hear their footsteps wow. cool and, and i wish they'd given them physical contact but they didn't you know mm -hmm. i've had it so many times that's how i know they're invisible right mm -hmm. so many times and yeah. and indoors and out so mm -hmm. there's a, there's so much that goes on inside yeah, you were saying that. That's uh, that's. I mean, that was surprising when when you first mentioned that that they actually do. I guess I wouldn't say manifest, but they actually do. Ha There's activity inside your house, which some people would be really freaked out by. That's where they sleep. That's where they take their shower. That's where they do all their. So I mean, really think about it. It's 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 kind of freaky. But with you, your relationship with them, you're. I mean, you're friends with them, or you're you're their. At this point, you're probably family with them. At this point, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, but you know, they've they've stated how they feel about me. That's for sure. And yeah, um, you know, I, I live with the woods behind me here, and there's another family I think back here. At, there's minimum two that I know of so far, mm. but they've been very slow at revealing their their. Uh, you know, revealing more. I haven't heard their voice yet. Um, although landlord has, there's been a couple of incidents when I, I think it was a couple of years ago though, uh, right here in the backyard um, with uh, loud vocals and, and uh, he knew what it was. And, and then, uh, you know, I had tents set up and I had a little one run up to my tent. It sounded like he or she rubbed two rocks together really fast like that and ran away, you know, and I'm snoring away in my tent. <laughs> so they're, they're here too. Yeah. That's awesome. I like what you said too, about uh, how they can contact within your dreams and how you've seen the shimmering. I've had ET contacts since 2017 yeah. and it's the same thing. Like they, the dream state seems to be such an easy in for them to access your consciousness. And it's just, it's, so interesting now because I, I came into your content just very recently through Mario and to hear you kind of speak about you know the way that the the Sasquatch come across a, compared to how I've experienced ET contact is mind-blowing <laughs> and do you like do you have any ET contact or yeah just I was just gonna say that when you're finished um, I've had a couple of, of weird things happen um, uh, it was, uh, well, there was July, uh, 2018. I had two incidents, 15 days apart and the conditions were pristine. They made sure of this, you know, yeah. that, that I couldn't dismiss it because of whatever. Um, the first one I was driving, um, North on the 400 beside Pearson airport. There's a lot of lanes there, you know, just North, of, North end of Toronto. And, um, it, there was not a cloud in the sky. It was about 12.30 in the afternoon, a sunny day, perfectly clear, just absolutely clear. And, um, you know, 12.30, the shadows are almost directly under uh, the vehicles. I was doing about the speed limit and, you know, maybe just just over that with the flow of traffic. And I remember I had a, in the lane to my left, I had a transport just ahead of me. I think there was a vehicle behind that. And, and suddenly this large shadow passed over top of me and it was going just a little faster than me. 
And I instantly, you know, it was like one of those WTF moments because I heard nothing and I stuck my head out, expect where's the plane, you know, right. and there was nothing there. So it was a cloaked ship. It, it had really? to be there. There was nothing there. Right. So, wow. so 15 days later, I was up in Neff's area and then, um, I, I got this little spot that I go to. So I was sitting on this gravel road in the chair, just watching the stars perfectly clear night. I could see way off in the distance. I could see a flight path and I could see planes passing and, and I could see their flashing lights, no problem. And, and the, you know, and then their engine sound catches up to them after they pass. And I'm watching this and, and suddenly I see a bright light. Like I got a big jet engine pointed directly at me. And I notice almost immediately there's no flashing lights on it. So I, you know, I stood up and I watched it and it came towards me. It got closer and closer. And then it, it might have been, I don't know, a couple hundred yards down the road from where I was where when it passed over, maybe a couple thousand feet in altitude. And it, again, the conditions were dead still. So I could hear a pin drop. Right. There, I, I didn't see a craft because of this bright light, but there, there was dead dead silent not a not a sound and then so there's been a couple of dream incidents with um uh one was like a this young blonde girl with a third eye and mm -hmm. and she put her hand on on my forehead and said some words to me and i you know and i broke down got all emotional i woke up and then one more where i had uh there was like a mothership with all these other craft flying around and one come down and you know this is in a dream state and and it right. flew into my ear it mm -hmm. scanned me now that's what i felt it scanned me and i got a image of a, a gray alien face and then i woke up like whoa oh, <laughs> that's cool oh. mm, it's funny yeah. that you mentioned uh the dead silence i had um an incident was it 20, 2018 actually? And I had gone to a group meditation, like a contact meditation. It wasn't CE5, but I had an experience in my home where three ETs literally came through a wall. <laughs> and right before that happened, like I experienced dead silence. Like it was the most deafening, like I couldn't hear my fridge running. I couldn't hear anything. It was just the most silent silence I'd ever heard in my life. And, and it's, I wonder if that has something to do with the contact experience, because I've heard that from other people too. Well, with, with me, the silence was just the forest up there. We get so many nights where it's, it's so still and quiet. So that was pretty normal, that part, but it was more about um, the conditions were pristine right. for, both in, for both incidents, right? What, what, what sounds like what you experienced was something maybe a little different or kind of in some void or something, you know? Right. Right. Huh. So, so Mike, are, are you, are you familiar with uh, Greer's work and the C5 uh, protocols and all that stuff? Um, yeah. I, I haven't really done the protocols. I've been to only one CE5 event that was in the uh, Quebec, um, Oh, that, that would have been a few years back now, at least. And maybe I don't know, maybe about five, six years ago at this point. And uh, you know, it didn't nothing happen, but uh, it, it was a it was a group of people at a um, kind of a remote uh, lodge, or I forget what they called it, auberge they called it, I think. And and there was a group, uh, like a C five group, that came in for that weekend, and and I did a I did a, uh, you know, like a talk on my stuff oh, cool. to a bunch of to a bunch of French folks. So I had somebody doing the translation for me. So that was, <laughs> you know, that was interesting. Yeah. So and I mean, and the reason I ask, <clears throat> of course, is because, um, you know, with the C five, there's uh, there's there's something called a co coherent thought sequence, where you were, you know, where you basically you're meditating and then you were you would basically re re remote view to another place in, in the galaxy or in, you, you know, it could be even be in the Milky Way. So I'm, I'm wondering if something like that could be applicable to looking for, for Sasquatch, basically. So instead of like, 
doing the coherent thought sequence like in outer space, you do it in like in a for in, in the forest, maybe or like in an old growth forest or whatever it may be. I don't know. I don't if it, see, yeah, sir. I don't see why it wouldn't work. You know. Yeah, because it's such a, a it's a consciousness thing. I mean, you're you're because you're meditating and you're really still. I mean, if, if you can reach that uh, that state, I mean, I would imagine that something like that could you know could help facilitate uh, contact with with Sasquatch. We're actually Jillian and I. We we went and um, we found like a bunch of sightings that happened in in uh, New Brunswick, and we're planning on going out and trying to. There's one place specifically uh, called Sagville in, in New Brunswick uh, that had the most concentration of, of of sightings, and we're planning on going there. You know, and just just like two newbies, and we're just gonna go and <laughs> see if we can. I mean, we're we don't expect to have like vocals like such as you know what you're going through or, or what you're experiencing but we're we're hoping maybe we can you know communicate with something maybe telepathically or or whatnot so um i guess that's the reason that we're asking you <laughs> i i've learned i never have any expectations going in um but i've also learned that uh you know it puts your intent out that you want to connect with them and maybe bring a gift and um, um, they, their ability to approach us, they can literally stand right beside you and you would not know it unless they wanted you to. Mm -hmm. right. um, so, you know, th that little stick break you hear, a little stick snap or something, you know, it could very well be their presence, right? Um, th they have many ways that, and, and they, they know what we focus on. I say this all the time. They know what we focus on. They use that to show their presence in many ways. Um, I, I tend to use this incident where I went to my <clears throat> tent spot. I was going back and forth um, from my car and, and it, it just a short little jaunt back and forth, you know, bringing my stuff in there and, and I was walking the same path. And I noticed all these mushrooms that had popped up, you know, while I'm doing my walk and, and I, I dropped my stuff off and going to get some more and suddenly right there in the middle of the path is a freshly picked mushroom sitting upside down that it wasn't there seconds earlier. So I had just noticed all the mushrooms and suddenly now there's one right there. Right. And it's so subtle, you know, it's so subtle. It's not like this big apparition. It's just like a mushroom. Right. And most people would not pick up on things like that. That's actually, yeah. that's a very good insight. I mean, for us, I mean, just pay attention to your surroundings because they'll communicate in a way that you would not expect, right? I, I mean, find I I find with them too that if you're looking for it, um, they tend to wait Sorry. until you're not, and then they'll catch you off guard every time. Oh, really? That's what's, hap <laughs> that's what's happened to me every time. That it's always they they love that element of surprise, right? Cool. Well, thanks for the warning. Appreciate that. <laughs> If yeah. you hear a tree go over, eh, it's a good, uh, it, it doesn't mean anything necessarily aggressive at all. If they want you to leave an area, they can make you leave without you even knowing you're leaving. It's happened to me. That's um, crazy. Wow. So, yeah, if, you know, any, even a vocalization, like I, I have one video I did not too long ago, a comparison video, and there's some campers in the U.S. there, and there was a, a male Sasquatch sounded very similar to Neff, started vocalizing. Um, uh, you know, most people, as they did, they would they would run, think that's, you know, aggressive. There's no aggression there. Mm -hmm. just, they're, they're just boisterous. It's just a matter of understanding their behavior. And so if if they want you to leave, you'll know it. Or you won't. You'll just leave, and you'll be like, "Why have we left?" Yeah, <laughs> that that's that's very that's very fascinating. And like, as I mean, I think I might have heard you talk about this before. But how how would how would one go about fortifying like their connection with them, or like to help establish a connection to them? And I'm talking like ge generally, like anybody that is interested in this subject. What would be like, I guess, uh, the top five things you would do to like to be able to 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 open yourself up to to such such a you know. I think um one of the main things to you know facilitate that sort of thing would be get in the woods and just be in nature mm -hmm. and enjoy nature they like to see us enjoy nature respect mm -hmm. nature and, mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, put your intention out, um, you know, telepathically. Talk to them as as if they're listening. You know, so you don't have to yell. You don't have to bang on trees. Um, talk to them as, as people. You know, they have names, right? Right. Respectfully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They. I. I think. They're they're revealing their themselves to more and more people. I, and I was kind of I was shown this um, years back that this you know they basically give me this um, vision I had just woken up to. So you know I was in that fresh state still. I just woken up and I get this this vision in my head. A dozen dozens of them walking across an open meadow all in the same direction and and and. The words soon your people will know, really just clear, but they weren't spoken. I actually felt them. Mm. It was just kind of bizarre. But um and I and I got the clarity that, you know, this is a reveal by their people. And, you know, soon the humans will know about them. And and that's what's been going on ever since. I've been watching this subject unfold. It's changed drastically since I, you know, I first got involved in this. And and I can see that this is what's going on. It's not a discovery. This is like a um, science playing a game of how long can we toe the line of keeping this, keeping people guessing, keeping this ape mentality alive, keeping this monster mm -hmm. portrayal. And mm -hmm. um, so it's uh, it, it, it's a reveal, you know, the, because there's a there's a bigger connection going on here. There's a UFO connection. Government, military—they have no control over this, so they're you know, they're labeled a threat, right? And what I love about Sasquatch is they know it goes on behind closed doors. You know, they they can tap into consciousness. So all these um, nasty, demonic humans or whatever you want to call them that are, um, you know, manipulating everything. You know, they they can they can see their their stuff, what what they're doing, right? Yeah, that's that's very apparent from from you know from what you've shared on your channel. Um, actually, any advice on so on people people uh, wanting to go out in the field and try to contact them, and you know, again, you have to exercise a lot of patience, and and, and your intent needs to be to be to be true, and it needs to be pure, it needs to be you need to be, yeah, you need to be a nice person basically. Uh, any any advice on how to handle any potential adversity so that would be like threats or like people just like you said those those poisonous evil people that just want to shut this thing down like any advice on that because i've heard you say that you've had a lot of like you know just just basically shit happen to you and oh uh, it's, it's never stopped you yeah. know it's never stopped the whole time but um I know I know what I have and, and I, I know my experience and I know it's valid and I and I have all the supporting evidence to go with it. And and on top of that, there's all these other people going out in the field, getting the same stuff. Right. They're um, experiencing hearing their voices, hearing their names called, um, hearing them speak English, uh, seeing the interdimensional aspect of them, uh, you know, things a lot of people get stuff happen. I even see stuff that happens on, you know, some, I don't really watch uh, any of these shows anymore, but once in a while I've, I've thrown one on and, 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 uh, and I see stuff happening and they're, they're, they don't jump on it. They're clueless. They really don't understand yeah. that, Hey, you got it going on, man. But you know, they're hanging up pheromone chips and putting up trail cams still. So right. you can, you can still get a reaction in that from them, you know, if you're whatever still in that ape mentality but you, you're really not probably going to get contact and be able to develop something like that that that's where it gets fun you know right.
months, I, if I remember correctly, it, it took you eight months of trying to get their attention to actually get like a, uh, I think it was, you said a vocal, it took you about eight months. Am I, am I... Well, it was, it was eight months. Um, I think we were in there every weekend for about eight months. And then that's when the vocals really started up. It was the beginning of May, 2013. Like I, I'd recorded stuff before that, just little tiny little bits and pieces, right? I think I got a little vocal the first night. Um, but it was, yeah, after eight months, that's when they really let their voice be heard. And um, I think it was done purposely to, you know, to put it out there mm. and, and share this stuff. Uh, you know, they, they want this, they want us to share our experiences because they, you know, they, they want the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the, the stigma behind it all, you know, the, the whole monster portrayal. I think they're trying to, you know, help us change that. And I've heard you say also that you do have some evidence that it's just far too, I guess I would, I'm going to say mind blowing to put out and, and they're requesting you not to put it out because it would just be, it would just cause a ruckus probably. Right. I, I heard you say something along those lines. But there, there's a time and a place for everything, I think. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. um, I don't blame yeah, like, you. I, you would get so much attention, bad, probably bad attention, if you were to release something that's just completely shocking, and everybody would just be like, you know, it would open everybody's eyes. But what would happen to you, and what would happen to them potentially, right? Who knows? Well, I think, um, you know, like as what happened with the vocals, you mm -hmm. know, would happen with this too, right? It, yeah, it just tear it apart. It's, uh, you know, so I guess there's a there's a right time. That's all, yeah. there, you know, and, and that certain stuff, I, I have no problem showing in person. Right. Well, when I, I go did. to one, when I go to Ontario, Mike, I'm going to go, <laughs> I want to, I, I want to see that stuff. Well, yeah, no, uh, eventually hey, I'll go, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, you're, you know, and welcome to come mm -hmm. by here and you know, I got casts and stuff laying all over the living room here. <laughs> <laughs> Sasquatch shrine here. That's a, that's amazing, man. That's really cool. Yeah. When you have these experiences, like when you have, you know, these contact experiences, do you ever find that you need to take a processing period? Like when, when something major happens, do you find you need to ground yourself? Like if you do need to ground yourself, are there tips on how you get to that point? You know, at this point, I'm, I'm so comfortable with it. It doesn't, uh, doesn't face it's you. very normal to me. Like I've seen so many marbles come out of thin air. Um, this one, this happened indoors uh, last last weekend. This one, you know, it's hard to see there. It's a oh, holy. big one though, you know, big marble. <laughs> I, uh, I came home with eight of them, but uh, wow. um, it's, I've seen so many of those out of thin air you know, right. just bounce off the chair or hit me or um, they've even allowed me to see that moment where it comes through empty space that that's yeah. happened twice wow. um, yeah. so you know all that stuff it's just the apports I'm so used to it so I don't really need to decompress or anything or um, I'm very comfortable with it it's very normal to me Right. If, I, if I heard a vocal in the room here right now, you know, it shocked me a little bit, but I'm completely mm -hmm. comfortable with it. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot to get to that point. Jeez. Yeah, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> when you started up, though, like when it started happening, was there ever a point where you're like, holy shit, like you just need to kind of process what happened or what, were you kind of comfortable with it early on? I had a lot of fear for a long time, right? Yeah. But I was looking for it, and then suddenly I have this situation dropped in my lap, and and it's what I'm looking for. It's the real thing, and what do you do? You mm -hmm. know? And I'm afraid, so it's like you either walk away, and that's it, mm -hmm. or, you know, you have this golden opportunity, and, and it, there was something that – happened when it was dropped in my lap basically and and i was given the information that there was a, a purported activity on a property um you know up here in the kawarthas in ontario and 
And as soon as I was told about it, I had a knowing, you know, something, give me a knowing. This is what I'm looking for. And I'd never talked to Dwayne before that, never met him. And But when I got that information, I said, get me that interview. I need to talk to them, right? <laughs> sure. Sure, sure enough. So, you know, it was it, it was definitely gifted for sure. That's amazing. Synchronicities, I guess. That's 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 what it boils down to. <laughs> that's really cool. Actually, yeah, I'm, there, gonna, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was just gonna say. You know, when you, there, it's it's hard to explain when you get a knowing, right? Uh, yeah. Unless it's happened to you, then you can understand. Yeah. It's just uh, there's a yeah. clarity that comes with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Uh, one thing I want to ask, and we, we had talked about this about this uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, are there any other so so researchers, people that are that that are that are you know doing work like you're doing, but getting the same results that are actually documenting it? Are there any people that you know specifically, or anybody you can point everybody to, like that to, to go check out? Is there anybody that has your your kind of? Um, I haven't seen anything that that has, comes close to what you have, but maybe I'm not looking hard enough. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure. Um. Yeah, I've talked to numerous people over the years and, and I interact with some people that are out in the field, you know, capturing vocals is a, mm. that's a whole other thing. I don't really see a lot of that. Um, like that's something that hasn't really been, um, it's rare, right? So, but people experiencing this, this sort of thing that are, that are seeing that, um, I'm not uh I like, got offhand it's it's you know it's hard for me to Oh I understand. <laughs> yeah, start yeah. banging off banging off names offhand. But, cool. Uh, I, I know uh was it Long Island Bigfoot guy Mike Colantino there. He's he's been really supportive. I know and he's been really supportive because he's got the same thing going on, right? So he um and and uh his buddy Kyle, who's, uh, you know, he's out in the field also experiencing this stuff, but there's, there's a whole bunch of people out there doing this right now. You know, there's a lot of people that are still hanging on to the, the old school futile methods that, you know, you're only going to get so far. You're going to hit a wall. That's it. You know, right. you're, you're lucky to get a, a reaction and then that's pretty much it. But, um, I know that, uh, uh, I watch an episode of that expedition Bigfoot. I don't really watch the stuff, right? I, I watched one because um, Ronnie LeBlanc, who's on there, he interviewed me years back for mm -hmm. his book. And then um, after uh, after our interview, he had I think it was that week, that weekend, three different incidents where marbles just you know appeared, right? Oh, really. Yeah. After after our talk, yeah, I, I talked to another guy out in Quebec who was going to help me with some audio, you know, and that's never gone through. But anyways, after discussing with him on the phone, he's got a cottage out in, in Quebec and uh, suddenly he started having things happen, you know, and vocals and footprints and you know just all kinds of crazy stuff. Right. Um, even uh, I think it was a pen appearing out of midair in his in his kitchen when he was talking to his wife you know dropped to the floor and that and mm. so i i find too some people that i've talked to have really uh, i think listening to neff's vocals um puts that energy out there and it seems that they're watching people who are watching those videos on my channel it seems like that and and checking people out and making contact with some of them and you know, suddenly people start having things happen. So there's there's been things that happen after just discussions with people and that. And um, okay. so it, it's just really interesting how it all, um, you know, how, how it's all happening. It's it's incredible. You know, they're, they're very powerful beings, right? That's very similar to uh, we had uh, interviewed Sue Sue Walker. Um, this was like what, what? When was this, uh, Jillian? This was like a few months, a couple months ago. Was it October, November, January? January, January? yeah. And yeah, was... and with her, it's the same thing. 
it would it like the phenomenon would follow people that have spoken to her because it's yeah. just so it's just so powerful and it, of course it, it doesn't it doesn't follow our rules of like linear travel and stuff so really no. I mean, yeah it was just so that yeah when you say that it reminds me of when when she warned us about that it's like by the way you might have something happen and something did happen uh but it's just yeah it's maybe jillian maybe we'll see something tonight me. Oh, yeah, no, that yeah, I'm very clairvoyant. Like I see no. when I relax and I, you know, get into a meditative state, I see imagery. Yeah. So during that that night, I did see an image of one of who was it, Radar, one of the ETs. Yeah. Yeah. She was and then you had a series of stuff. You weren't sure if it was for me. It was all it was all computer related stuff. All these weird things happening. Something posted without me posting it. Remember that? Oh, that thing that you posted that that got erased. And it said it was me that erased it, but I did not erase it. I wasn't even at my computer. I was with my kids. And I was like, he, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, it was very bizarre. Very bizarre. But and then, like a real hub post. It was just a string of weird yeah. stuff. And they, it, can, they can manipulate all of our electronics. Uh, like I, there was another uh, text incident um, on the last visit. I didn't realize until the next day when I got home because the my... Uh, I play music. My bass player got a weird text, right? Just all garbled. Uh, <laughs> and, and he, and he texted me the same back. And I said, so, the hell's that? I said, Oh, that happened at one 30 in the morning. Okay. I was right in the thick of it. You know? <laughs> so, and it's happened um, several times with the phone. Um, I've been given a uh, short little video clips, you know, with Harry something, Right. Um, on, on the video, uh, dozens of images put on the camera so that they show that they can uh, manipulate our electronics. I find it very, uh, very um, fascinating. The, fi the pictures that you would that you show on your uh, channel with uh, it looks like a mesh of some sort. Yeah. That, what is that? That's so fascinating. I, I think it's a veil between dimensions. Right. I, I At one point, I had a. Um, I wanted to try salvia divinorum, which is apparently the, you know, most potent hallucinogenic, you know, plant mm -hmm. of the sage family, right? And it was legal back then. It was all these stupid kids putting their videos out there that made yeah. it illegal. Idiots. And yeah. then, um, so I had yeah. bought a, a cutting through eBay at the time, uh, sent it to me from, uh, I think it was... Uh, calgary or winnipeg or something and and uh, and so i grew the plant and i kicked myself for letting it go but uh, i tried it because you know they sold it in the head shops and stuff and but i didn't want to buy it there i wanted to i wanted to, i want the plant i wanted to grow it myself so i knew where it was coming from so i tried it and man that's scary stuff i tell you it's short-lived <laughs> thankfully but i saw that veil I saw you? it. Really? Yeah. I saw it. And and then I remember seeing a tear in it. And I was and I, and then I could see this reality through the tear. I could see it on the other side of it. So I was on the other side of uh you know, I wasn't in this side. I was on that side and I saw oh. that tear and I and, and I you know, felt relief because I was like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> but I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a trip. Wow. It was. <laughs> Jeez, oh Christ. And, and and when on the in, on the other side, I mean, having reviewed your photos and 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 your videos and whatnot, does it look exactly the same as this side, or is it another place? Is it another like? Uh, is it like like let's say it's winter over there, or like here? Is it summer over there? Like for example. Well, when that happened to mm -hmm. me, nothing really looked any different except oh. seeing that veil. Right. Um. It's very, uh, very in intense stuff, right? Very clinically clean too. It was amazing how clean it is, and and then there's no um, come down with it. There's definitely no addiction with it because mm -hmm. I had the plant. I did it once. I think I did it twice in the time I had it in, in a year or something, and th th it's definitely not addictive. It's it's kind of like no, I'm good. <laughs> um, <laughs> But it was, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't really see anything different except I saw that veil. So. 
That is so, so cool. That kind of connects connects it. I mean, for 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 you, like the first time you saw that, you must have been like, I mean, for me, I remember seeing that like the screen. I thought maybe you took the, the pictures were taken through a screen, an actual screen. But then when you explained that it, it was the, like that, it, it might have been something like 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 a veil, like a separation of some sort. I I, I remember being like, what? How do you how do you process that? It makes no sense. Then when you really, I mean, like, look at, look at, look at us. How are we supposed to make sense of anything that you're putting, you're putting on the channel? That's why so many people are like so torn about your material. It's just so unbelievable. It's unbelievable until you dig into it. And I'm, I'm saying this because I want people to, that, that are watching this to go check out your channel and really dig into it, you know? And um, one thing I want to ask you as well is, um, I noticed that you have like a, like a, like a, it's like a subscription on your channel. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, so what, what, what type of um, material do you have? Like if someone were just to, to, to subscribe. Uh, just, what, um, there's, there's a two tiered thing there. Um, if you do that, just do the, do the lower one. I think I'm going to take the other one out because I'm not putting out as the content that, you know, I was, um, that I want to, right? I, I don't put out quantity, but it is quality. It's basically, you know, any visits, updates, um, you know, so there's there's stuff on there with, uh, you know, vocals and activity happening indoors. And, you know, just uh, at one point, I was just asked by the, the property owner to not post it publicly anymore. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, so I did that basically behind a closed door right mm -hmm. and um i don't know how if i'm gonna keep that going depending on on the activity because once the seasons change in that um Dwayne, i don't know it's been 10 years now right so it's kind of uh it's getting to the point where not not monotonous it's never you know, there's not monotony there for, for me anyways, right? Right. Um, with him going to the cottage, it's work uh, all the time, right? It's 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 an effort and to, you know, to, especially throughout the winter and stuff, right? Um, so, uh, well, I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to keep it going for now and start pitching my tent soon and uh, see how that continues. But, yeah, it's basically updates and that, right? So. Cool. Yeah, because I had seen that... Uh... I think you had mentioned that, that, yeah, uh, Dwayne didn't want too much attention anymore. And I don't blame him, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so, okay, cool. No, I just want people yeah. to know that too. I, I And I mean, I'm, I've always been like, oh, I should click on that. Or maybe I'm, I'm going to ask him, see what see what's on there. I mean, like, it's it's that it's not a whole, just so people know, it's not a whole lot of money. And I mean, but really, I mean, if if you're getting updates, which is not available on the channel, it's, I would say it's, it's worth every penny, people. So... Mm -hmm. You'll yeah, there's uh, like there's one one of my favorites on there was uh, remember the big guy left his a uh, 21 inch single print one night and um, his foot had grown an inch right so he's about 12 feet tall and then right across <laughs> from the other side of the road young guy had left the trackway so I was sitting there filming the trackway and I got pinged off by a snowmobile uh, snowmobile by a snowball and uh, the so he was right there, hit me with a snowball, and then I captured his laugh, I guess, chuckled, laugh right beside me, you know, catch it on the video camera, on the audio while it's running, and, you know, stuff like That's that, nice, right? Yeah. Uh, vocals that I've captured indoors, um, that, uh, you know, I've captured Neff's voice indoors. Uh, there was one night I we'd heard it. Uh, I think I think we'd heard it once and then I was like oh or maybe maybe twice by the second time it could have been after the first time I can't remember I said okay I've got to run a audio recorder indoors right I missed the first uh, I missed the first one and then I think he did it about three or four more times you know just uh just weird funny little vocals right mm -hmm. uh, so I, th there's a lot of stuff that is out on my videos that I don't point out that really gets missed. If I sit there and explain it, then you can understand. Um, right. You know, like uh, there's 
one that um, I don't know if this is on that subscription one or not, but we go outside and and uh, I get go into my car to check the battery status because I got a, microphones running through my sunroof and you know Dwayne's right there and and he asked me what are you doing? I said I'm you know checking the batteries. Why? You know and, and asked why and. And then, then he corrects himself. Oh, yeah, okay. And and in that time, you hear, Duh, you know, this <laughs> voice, <laughs> voice right there beside us. You know, it's not, it's not us, right? Just making making fun of him, right? It's funny. It's, so. it, it, and it's so. It's it, I find it so surprising and so fascinating that they can they they can understand English. Just, I mean, it, it just blows me away. I'm like, wow. Okay, that well, makes sense. I mean, like they're they're obviously very intelligent. So, from from what they have told me, they understand all language, and it's at an energy level. And I got, I was given when I told you that earlier thing about soon your people will know. So those words came to me with undeniable clarity, but they were not spoken. I felt them. So mm. I believe that's how they understand. You know, it was just like clearly understood what they were saying, but it wasn't verbal. Um, so they, because I've asked them, you know, about understanding language, and they they wrote all. You know, that's you know, well, I guess yeah. So energetic meaning they go by the emotion, probably the emotion that we we exude. Who knows, right? They they gave me an incident. Um, it was back in 2013. I was crashed on the couch and. And in I was in a dream, and in the dream, I was crashed on the couch, just like I was in real life. And one of the older females, um, I didn't, I could only sense her in my peripheral, uh, brought one of the kids, the size of a four-year-old. Um, one of the, I think it was the little girl at this point. That's, you know, back then I wasn't sure. At this point, I think it was uh, the the little girl. And but the size of a four-year-old, she would stand right there in front of me, and, and I'd reach my hand out, and she grabbed on my hand, and so I was holding her hand, and I felt her emotions. They're running right through me, like they were my own. And I and I took my arm, and I kind of went, you know, just a little bit, just give a little jerk to purposely get a reaction from her, not to scare her. I was just in that state, and I, you know, I was feeling this energy, emotion from her, like as it was my own so i i wanted more of that and i kind of give my hand a little jerk to get a reaction and and this explosion of she was so freaked out but so excited at the same time you know just kind of up through my arm and through my body and it was like just wow man you know just feeling her energy and her emotions at that level just it was mind-blowing and you know i'll never forget that so they're very um just you know quantum energy beings man they're it's just amazing what they're capable of man. and in terms of, of what they look like i mean i've seen so many things online but who knows where that's sourced from but for from yourself i mean you've actually seen them as what they what they look like i mean you said like you like you saw that little girl what would be their facial features it's like it's like so like let's say like ethnically what would they what would they look like Neff, as well Neff is black Neff is black He's got a muscular face. He's got okay. good teeth, um, black eyes, uh, no facial hair. No facial uh, hair. Okay. And, you know, they all look different too, right? So um, I, I think guess... maybe when they're, I think when maybe when they're younger, they, they have a lot of hair in their face. I don't know if they lose that over time or um you know, so I, I just I, I clearly know what Neff's face looks like. And you said like big, big eyes and like there there's no like white, it's just black, completely black eyes. Yeah, his, his eyes are black, you know. Wow. Wow. Muscular face. Muscular face. That's that's crazy. Well, I mean, I, I've seen the <laughs> I watched the um the documentary that uh well, you you know this name really well. Uh, Todd Standing put out, and at, at the end of the documentary, there's he records the face, and it looks like 
what you described, like a, a, a like a black face. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> I don't believe uh, I don't believe anything uh, Stanley yeah. puts it. No, yeah. I know I know how they are. I know how they act. I know um, how difficult it is to get a visual on them, especially when you're in there searching for them. They're not yeah. given that. No, uh, um, that's what I. I it's I've barely had a glimpse in 10 years and I have trust. Mm. Um, so yeah, I have a very difficult time. I, I took his stuff and even asked them. Right. So right. Um, well, I know he does get activity. I, I don't say he doesn't get activity. You know, he does. It's just those puppets kind of, yeah, he doesn't even believe they're interdimensional from my understanding. Oh, really? So, yeah. yeah. Which means he, he hasn't gone he hasn't gone deep. He's just, it's just like a, he's, he's going squatching basically. <laughs> yeah. Or, or he's in denial. Could uh, be yeah, that too. Right. You know, the, uh, I'm sure he's had, well, I know he's had things happen, mm. um, but I don't think he's put two and two together yet or, or in denial. It's, it's easy to be in denial, you know, with this subject. I, oh, I see it every day. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. I believe it for sure. Yeah. Have you ever heard, like, have you ever heard of any sightings in New Brunswick or Atlantic? Um, I think, uh, I think I talked to somebody some, I don't know, years ago. I don't know how long I think they were from there. And, and, oh, no, I know what it was. It was, uh, somebody I worked with actually. And, um, and, you know, I, I'm very open about this stuff. I tell anybody and everybody. I don't give a I don't give a shit what anybody thinks, right? I'll tell I'll tell a boss, you know, even if it gets me fired for you know them thinking I'm crazy. I don't care. <laughs> right. um, but I had one coworker and he used to make fun of me, and then you know I just just ribbed me right, and and then uh, then he then he told me about uh, seeing one, so I I, I laughed at him. <laughs> I said oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you know they exist. Um, so they, uh, I went out to California, and I remember at one point, I'm in, I'm in a vehicle riding passenger, and took my video camera, pointed out the window. I think we were driving along the coast, pointed out the window, and when I played back that footage, I went through it very carefully, and I. There was this one spot, and it was right when I put the camera in, almost right away. And there's something there, man. It's 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 uh it's you know it's dark. It and it moves. It takes off as soon as I, you know, it, you can't really tell what it is, but I I assume it's one of them. And then we went to Mendocino, um, or actually on the way there, we stopped by this river. And I, I talked about this in, in my presentation, found this line of tracks. I actually found these uh, other footprints that I think were all Sasquatch around this uh, old campfire. It was like they came in to check things out. There was sand all over the place and there was these clear prints and, and they had the shape. You know, they had the shape. Uh, the person I was with didn't believe they figured they were just human, but I don't think so. You know, when, mm. when I look at them, I've been, I've looked at a lot of prints. Um, right. I think there was about three or four family members. But anyways, this <clears throat> about a four foot length, the uh, tree branch was pushed into the, into the sand there at the side of the river. And there was a, a trackway of some small prints, but it was a tightrope trackway right beside them. So, you know, I've documented that, checked that out. And, uh, it was uh, really interesting. Then we left for the night, went to Mendocino, and uh, and we had something happen there. And that's where I got a really the nastiest sounding telepathic snarl that woke me up. It was not the Sasquatch, that snarl. It was something else. It was, it was crazy. Was What's that? You think it was a bear? Oh, no, no, no. No, no, this was otherworldly. This was tele. This, this was. I had audio running outside the tent. I remember waking up and thinking, "Oh, that's going to be on the on the recorder." It wasn't there, mm. and, and the clarity was. The snarl was. I think it was like could have been a dog man thing. It was right. really crazy, and then um, it was so dry in there and so dead still. And then when we 
we left, we were down in this valley and drive down there. On, on the way, I think it was on the way out, um, we'd stop the vehicle at one point, checking something out, and suddenly hear a wood knock near the car. Oh, that's, you know, that was interesting. So after that, on the way back, so this is the very next day, we stopped at that same river. And I went right up to that trackway. That stick had been now picked up and put on the other side of the tracks. Mm -hmm. So there's no reason. That there And there was nobody in there. There's no reason for somebody to, to go walk in. There was no other footprints, right? Mm -hmm. It showed me, like, from my experience, um, I was, we were being watched. So my point cool. being uh, to get back to uh, doesn't they're, they're everywhere. They really are. So, yeah, they're there. They're in New Brunswick. Of course they are. <laughs> and, like, any insight on, um, you know, people usually say that they're used to, that they're they're more, I guess, they're more populous in, like, the, um, uh, on the West Coast. So, like, Washington, B.C. Is, is, there, is there a reason why there's way more sightings over there? Is, be, is it because it's so remote, maybe? Or is it because that's their habitat is more like old growth you know for, totally untouched forests or i i think it's really just um because it, it's been popularized the west coast about sightings mm. excuse me sightings and that there um when i learned you know when i when i first learned there in ontario i had no idea and now i realize that they're, they're practically everywhere. So um, I think it's just the West Coast has, you know, been kind of put on this pedestal as the the go-to for, for Sasquatch sightings. But mm. in reality, um, my first close vocal encounter was the top end of Toronto. Really? So close to the actual city of Toronto? <laughs> you wouldn't that's, think, right? That's, that's the incident that put me on this path. So where was it exactly? Well, y'all tell me exactly where. It's. So so it's just up north from from Toronto. Yeah, top end of the city in one of the forest patches up there, and wow. and um, that's where I'd met somebody to uh, basically showed me the ropes, and and the first time I went out, um, I'd actually gone out once before that out to the Bon Echo region. Uh, it was Lake Mississaugan. I had a employer at the time who had a. Uh, a cottage on that lake the cottage is on one side and the other side is just all wilderness and and he told me about this awesome camp spot so went there with a, a good buddy of mine and um and we heard one scream and you know the very next morning off in the distance went on and on for a bit right that was the very first time i went out and then when i went to this other spot um which would have which i just mentioned so that was like the first time i went there and and that's where I got that triple, like whoop, whoop, whoop. But it, it was, it was out of this world. How loud Ooh. it was! <laughs> it was so raspy. And I remember, you know, thinking it sounded ten feet tall and sounded like you could speak English. It was so pronounced the the whoops that he put out. But I, I knew exactly what it was as soon as that, as soon as he vocalized. I was going to say that thing, but no, <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> no. <laughs> um, as soon as he vocalized, I. I knew what it was without a doubt. You know, I didn't have to see it. Amazing, because because I wouldn't think. I mean, I, I lived in Toronto for about eight years, and I I would not expect like sitting with my family having a picnic at High Park and hearing a whoop whoop. I'd be like, it must be like a, it must be some weirdo somewhere in the woods, you know, just trying to pull my leg. But I mean, obviously, anybody who's heard your videos, it's not just a a, a regular whoop whoop. It's like this the voice is so deep that it's just, you can't, you know, you can't mistake it for something else. In my opinion. It's yeah. Just... It, it's, um, you know, like where I had that first close vocal encounter, the last place on earth I would ever think of experience. Right. That. right. So, you know, since then, and, and they actually showed me their abilities early on back then when I was, because once I had that, I was in there every weekend for the next year. I think, uh, you know, uh, slip, uh, I wasn't doing every weekend the year after that. But um, 
uh, that first year, definitely. And, and I ran into them the, the very next weekend. That's when I got sent out of there. You know, next thing I know, I'm driving home. It's like, how the hell did I get here? Right? Mm. So that's when I had that weird incident. Um, and then another incident we had there was, uh, I remember it was during the week. It was about two o'clock in the morning, I think, and very well lit, uh, moonlit night. Didn't need flashlights. I remember seeing this, uh, it was snow on the ground and seeing this uh, trackway cross this main trail. So I was, I was checking it out. You know, the other guy that was with me, I used whenever doing something else right there. And so I was checking out this trackway, trying to figure out if it was a deer jumping or what it was. And, and suddenly I heard uh, bipedal footsteps crunching through the snow right there around us. And I, I was Ooh. freaking out. And I remember I was running a, it was an old eight millimeter video camera at the time that I had. And, and I taped over it because I was in such denial. Mm. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I did. I think I still got those old tapes, right? Um, I should pull them out and go through them. But uh, and, and I heard this clear crunching through the snow on two feet right there. And there was nothing there. We we're freaking out. It was like, There's nothing here. You know, where is it? And um, so they were, you know, one of them was right there showing their presence, completely invisible. And, and yeah. yeah, and you had mentioned a, vi a video camera. One thing I, I think I might have heard this from you, but I'm not I don't remember exactly um, that when it comes to 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 uh, our technology, trying to capture their their presence, video cameras are something that they don't really appreciate too much. Right. They, maybe is it the ele electromagnetic frequency of the device or is it? I, I, I think it's just more that if you're trying to capture them or trick them, um, yeah. they don't appreciate that. Mm. Like I, I videotape, I, I don't run a video camera. It's just not conducive. You know, there's um, at Dwayne's Cottage, there's uh, uh, what do you call it? Surveillance cameras, but we never see anything on them. You know, mm. they're invisible, right? But uh, there was, um, I know there was one visit that there was somebody else there and and a face showed itself in the window with, I was trying to find out last visit what that was, but, you know, because I, I don't think it was one of them, man. No. But its eyes were way bigger, big, big black eyes, you know, stuck its face in the window. Dwayne, you know, he got a, he got a photograph of it, but wasn't you know very clear right and it's just kind of bizarre looking um i think i've put it in a video somewhere i'm not sure it's just it's so out there you know most Is it people like, you see? like the big the the eyes are yeah yeah Ooh. yeah it's very very strange like i said it's not very clear but um but it's real right and, and what happened was this other person was sitting at the table and I think Dwayne had gone to get some wood or something. And, and they heard, uh, this other person had heard a knock tap on the window and, and he looked and he saw this face and, you know, and, uh, I, I think he was, um, he wasn't exactly coherent. So, um, just kind of turn up. I think he put his head back down the table. Dwayne comes in and he told him about it and, Dwayne was like, yeah, yeah, right, sure. And then it yeah. happened again. <laughs> managed to go click and get one photo. So, um, nice. But yeah, yeah, the the eyes compared to Neff's look three times the size you now. Wow. So I, I think maybe it was some ET. I don't know. Well, that's just it, too. I mean, ETs, I know they're interdi interdimensional. They go through, you know. Yeah. So it wouldn't surprise me if they were popping around while you guys were out looking for Sasquatch. Just maybe even to prove a point or to show that they're around too. That's how they, you know, that's cool. There's been other weird stuff that, that's happened up there that I wish I, I had witnessed. Um, a, a flock of Thunderbirds. This is, I think, probably maybe closer to 25, 30 years ago at this point now, but 15 foot wingspan and about 15 of them. And the, the, <laughs> it's the sound that, that freaked them out. It was the sound that caught their attention that they were making. Right. 
Um, right. and there was another story that came from another source of uh, four babies sitting in a tree, you know, about four feet tall, uh, scales, uh, skin like scales. Um, so I think, uh, I think it has to do with the um, the geography, the, maybe the what do you call it, the the minerals and that in the area in the region might make things more intense. You know the energies. I don't know, but I've heard granite did something. Granite's supposed to be one of those things. Apparently, that's what I've heard. Apparently, well, I've heard that with uh, well, I'm I'm I'm, sure, I'm I know you've heard of this guy, uh, David Politis. Uh, missing 411 he mentioned that like uh a lot of the occurrences that happen like the disappearances and, and whatnot um are in areas where there's like not all but a lot of them are in areas with a lot of granite and water uh, like waterways under the earth which is i i, I don't even know what the correlation is but it's well i, I Again, I would think, you know, it has to do with energies um, yeah. intensified with uh, with crystal in the ground and stuff. And, and up there, you know, that it's tons, tons of water and granite and crystal and um, uh, Bancroft area is, I think, uh, forget 90 something percent of the world's minerals can be found in that region. Hmm. Um, it's so there's. Uh, I think it, it, there's a correlation between between that. You know. Yeah. Well, as you mentioned, the crystals uh, and crystals that uh, they do they do collect energy. They we use them in ele in electronics, so it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of quartz in that up there. And yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. I think it has something to do with it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know maybe I, I don't. There's also the thought of ley lines, you know, that sort of thing. I haven't really looked into that about that region. I've never really studied that, but it, that would be interesting to look into as well. Yeah, there's just so many, so many things that you can, well, with, with the internet, it's such, there's so many different ha rabbit holes you can go down when it comes to things like what you just mentioned, because there's just, it's just, overwhelmingly there's overwhelmingly too much information in my opinion i didn't even know where to start when it comes to that kind of stuff yeah like i mentioned I, the david polites thing i mean like there's just it's just so it's just it goes so deep just don't know where where yeah. to start well i you know i've learned we're we're being watched there's other beings that have abilities and i i think all this stuff that's written in folklore it's real. You it know? has to be. Yeah, yeah. I agree. I Even agree. dragons and freaking unicorns at this point, mm -hmm. you know, it wouldn't surprise me. My um, daughter would maybe, love that. <laughs> maybe they still exist. Like I mm. said, if, if if a thunderbird can go through a veil and into right. this realm, yeah, yeah. Um, why not other stuff too? So, you know, I think there's a, a lot of you know, there's the little people. Apparently, you know, that the native culture is well aware of. Uh, so I think there's a, a lot of truth to, you know, all this folklore stuff that has been written uh, written throughout antiquity. You know? And you mentioned once, uh, from what I can remember, uh, that uh, apparently Sasquatch would be our ancestor. So we'd be, so we're, I guess, okay. part of here's, here, here's one for you. Then. <laughs> this, <laughs> this is... This, this could upset some people. I don't know, but... Um, oh, come on, do it. Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> so, oh, I, 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 I will. <laughs> um, I had asked... I've been asking them. I've been trying to find out the origin of humans. So, you know, who created humans? No answer. Mm. And I asked the right question. So it seems that I have to ask the right question. So I asked them. I said, did the Anunnaki create humans? They said, mm. yes. Really? Okay. And then I asked, uh, you know, apparently we have a different creator than they do. So really? the Anunnaki did not create the Sasquatch, but I was told that the Anunnaki created humans, but there's a DNA connection. You know, they have uh, mitochondrial DNA, which is homo sapien, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's the connection um, to the, to the Sasquatch. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, obviously, I don't know 
what our history is, but I, I'm just the messenger. I ask some questions and you know, relaying the answers that are given to me, right? So, you know, we have that DNA connection to them, but apparently a different creator. And our creator, you know, I, I, I question what, you know, what is God? And um, right. I've, I've asked them before, you know, is, is Jesus Christ the son of God? They, they said yes to that. Um, I've, uh, I had an experience about 25 years ago where I was, it was, a, I think it was like a series of dreams, like three dreams. And I woke up from this third one and, and it was a time in my life when I, I was in like super great shape. I was at the gym three, four times a week, you know, just doing the cardio, doing the weights. I, I was rock solid, right? That's when I actually had a skydiving accident too. And oh, it probably, probably helped save me. I had a failed parachute, but oh I God. woke up from this third dream and I had a, uh, I was, I had this, I, it felt like I was touched by God. I, I had this pure, unconditional love. My head felt like it was connected to the universe. It was really weird. Oh. And, it wasn't, and it wasn't just I woke up and, you know, and then it was gone. It lasted all, a week. And really? that it, I could feel it. It was gently letting go as unconditional. And I remember thinking, saying at the time that there isn't a drug on earth that could touch this. It, it was that powerful. And and as a loving, unconditional love would do, it it let go gently. I could feel it tapering off, lessening as the week went on. Right? It was you know so something godlike gave me a, that gift. Right? And I was like, I hope I get that again in my life. You know, I'm, I'm not treating my body as I did back then. You know, kind of abusing myself <laughs> at this point. You know, drink a little too much beer and that, but. Uh, um, but that showed me, uh, you know, like I said, it was godlike, but, uh, what was that? I don't know. Right. And that's so, so who, who knows, you know, we've been manipulated so much and told this and told that. And, um, I, I question absolutely everything. You know? We're, we're, we're kept in a very, very tight box yeah. is, is what's, I guess is what it is. Yeah. It's like the, the box, everything in the box is is 3d it's physical and that's all it is sorry but the box is, is is it's it's almost like it's being kept closed we need the powers that be the people that profit or whatever may be off of us do not want us to open that box we need to they're stay hiding. yeah they're hiding stuff from us yeah and I've oh, yeah. I've asked conspiracy related questions to Neff's family it's like they know it's like they know it all Mm. You know, um, the whole uh, thing going on the last few years, they're well aware of that. Mm. Um, <clears throat> there's, uh, you know, I've asked them about the, the firmament, all that stuff. You know, they confirmed that. They gave me a drawing and, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's even written in stone on, on Werner von Braun's gravestone, you know. Oh, really? So, Oh. Yes, Psalms 19-1. That's and then you oh. look that up and it talks about firmament. Oh, cool. I didn't know that. Okay. You know, and then there's Admiral Byrd that uh um way back in the 40s, I think it was, did those expeditions out the Antarctic, and you know, now there's this Antarctic treaty with everybody on board. Mm. And you can try and you can sure you can go up to a certain little place there, I think, for sightseeing or whatever, but you try and start going a little too far, you're going to be escorted out by military. Because there's a lot of probably history hidden in the ice, right? Or some something along those lines, or maybe there's land, something living there. Uh, well, yeah. uh, according to Neff's family, there's land being hidden from us. There's land there, right. Wow. Jeez, oh, cripes. And if you look from the sky, if you look at satellite imagery, some people have found some weird looking shit, like just sitting there in the ice. And, and uh, it like, looks like, some look like, holes i mean there's even people have have i've seen pictures i'm not sure if they're real or not but uh pyramids right um, yeah that's just yeah at, at this point with my experiences i believe nothing from government i believe nothing from mainstream media i believe you know 
I question everything from science. I believe nothing from NASA anymore. You know, that that's the point I'm at. I believe nothing that they've told us uh, in our education growing up. I, I tossed it all in the garbage. So when it comes to like education, uh, what do you think it would take to get, uh, you know, the subject of, well, such as, as Sasquatch, a subject like that into schools so be, they could learn about it? Because, I mean, the information that you have could be presented in a school. And I mean, as long as the people that are running the school are open to the, the, the suggestion, what do you think it would take to get this into the education system as just like, you know, an extracurricular kind of a course to begin with and then pile on the data as it comes along? I, I think it's just like an evolution of things unfolding. And, you know, I, I was just given that opportunity, right, to, to speak to a university yeah. class. And that's crazy. I know. That's just and nice. um, that was cool. Yeah, any plans on 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 going and doing that? I mean, I I know you have to wait for the invite. I'm not sh I'm not sure you can go knock on on doors and say, hey, can I can I talk about Sasquatch in front of your school? You probably have to wait for the invite. Any any um any other I guess uh, um, um leads or anything specifically? Um, the, the 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 professor there who invited me to do that um there's very good chance that i'll be doing that again there oh cool you know, different students right cool different yeah. semester so yeah. i think he wants to kind of integrate that in, into into that so i told my hey yeah i'm more than happy to you know he even offered he said hey you can do it remotely and, no 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 i'll i'll do the drive it's a couple hours for me no i'll Ooh. do the drive i'd rather do it in person and you know, bring the cast and that it's, it's just, it's more of an impact in person. Right. Um, I, I, as, like I said, as this unfolds and people become more open to it and, and it is starting to take hold more, right. The, the old stuff is starting to fall away and, um, it, it it'll, it'll happen. I personally, I think at some point this, is my future of, of you know basically speaking and teaching this stuff what i've learned and i certainly hope so man because you've got a knack for it i mean have having seen i know you're nervous i i know public speaking i i had to go through toastmasters to be able to public speak as i couldn't i would feel like i was going to die in front of a, of a of a crowd so you did well considering it was your first time and you you, you didn't sound like you weren't like choking or you weren't you did I almost did a couple times, almost. Oh, did you? <laughs> I, held, I held it back, though. I hit it, so. Yeah. <laughs> and, and you weren't green. You looked like you were the same color as you are now. <laughs> so like, you did well. Yeah, well these, these uh, I don't know, this camera, though, it's really bright. Eh? I, I don't, uh, but anyways, it was all good. Yeah, it was all good. Yeah, yeah, it was really good, man. I, mean, we were, I, re I personally really enjoyed it. Yeah, same. But, um, I guess, I guess we're, we're almost actually out of time. I think it's 930 already. I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but one thing I, I like to ask, oh, and this is this might sound like a typical thing you'd hear at the end of an interview. But <laughs> I'll give it a shot. So if if you could sum up all your experiences with Sasquatch, let's say, and what you've learned from them, um, so in like a statement. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a one sentence, but in a statement, what would you tell the world? Like your your elevator pitch to the world. What would it be like? Just to say, like just just to you know just. Tell them, tell them what you, who you are, what you've experienced, and what you've learned from it. I guess, yeah. You know, I, I don't know. It's it, it's a lot to comprehend. Mm -hmm. um, the world has basically so man, been so manipulated, so brainwashed, um, just to to keep an open mind that you know all this, whatever our what. What, what we've been taught throughout our lives just to don't be so convinced by that because there is a lot more going on that we're not being told about. Um, and slowly, as you can see through mainstream media, you know, now they're bringing the, the whole UFO thing into the picture and, you mm -hmm. know, but they're always using the the element of fear, right? You know, oh, shooting, shooting down UFOs, and you know, um, 
personally, I think that this is all an introduction into the whole Project Bluebeam thing, but mm -hmm. you know, yeah, mm -hmm. just kind of getting our minds prepared, right? <laughs> um, it, I'm at a point I can see through it all. It's so simple, but um, just, just to you know, keep an open mind. There are there's things going on in this earth that are magic. It really does exist, you know, and and it's not. Um, it's not magic per se it's physics and it's uh, you know energy and it's just uh, there's other things out there that we don't know that really are really intelligent that um have a much broader grasp on on true reality and and energy at a quantum level of, that they know how to manipulate it to a to a level that you know we're the toddlers we don't know shit we don't know anything, you know, we're taking our first steps and, and there's other things out there that have always been there and they're watching us and they're interacting with, with, you know, humans that they choose, right. That mm -hmm. they select, you know, mm -hmm. select humans um, are having contact experiences with the uh, ETs or, or Sasquatch. And, and I think there's a, a lot more out there that we don't know about, um, I agree a hundred percent on that one. I've had my experiences too. Uh, and it's just intuition, I guess, for me, what, when, you, when, when you're talking about the government and like uh, how we're being manipulated, it's not just, Oh, I've seen it on TV or someone, it was just like um, someone, someone I know told me it's just this, it's just, you feel, it, you know, I mean, I know I'm, most people don't, uh, but I'm, I'm like, you. I'm, I'm on the same page as you. Just... Yeah, a lot of people are, you know, the, the, there's that disconnect because they have been manipul manipulated so much. Exactly. Um, that they're disconnected. And, and this is where I think getting out into nature, you know, can help change that. And, and even like take your shoes off, and, mm -hmm. you know, ground yourself. And um, I don't do that enough myself, but, uh, you know, that's something really good to do as well, right? When you're walking in the woods, you know, take your shoes off. And... That's what we do. We go to the beach. When, that's why you, I, I think that's one of the reasons when you go to the beach, you get home and you're like, ah, oh, you feel so good because you've been earthing all day. That's, 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 that's my take on that for sure. Like, yeah, be out in nature. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree with you on that one. Yeah. So the, the whole intuition is, um, you know, definitely it, it tells us uh, yeah, something something isn't right you know with this system mm -hmm. some of some of us just feel like it's completely broken completely corrupt it's got to be wiped clean and start all over that's yeah. that's where i'm at right? so, it's a and you're right it's a long it's a long process i would imagine it's going to be a long process but and I, I and i keep telling people this the most important asset we have on this planet are the kids educate the kids uh make sure the kids are brought up and or i mean i know it's not not an easy thing to do but if you if kids kids should be born in a family that can can teach them and 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 you know not corrupt them kids are very important to their our future obviously that's yeah. the most important thing that's what i was mentioning education on this i think it would be amazing to have something like this in in schools to give them like the kids love exploring and they love they love stuff like this, you know, mysteries and why not teach them something that's actually true? It's not a, you know, a freaking fairy tale. <laughs> so they, they do expose it in little ways, like, you know, through their movies, their cartoons and stuff. And, true. Yeah. You know, little Sasquatch uh, Bigfoot movies where they, they, they can disappear. They even show they got these abilities, right? So slowly you know it's evolving and, and coming out that's cool i like that good. thank you so much for coming on with us like we've really been looking forward to this and mm -hmm. the whole time it's just been grasping my attention so i can only imagine you know how everyone else is going to feel when they see it and yeah it's been a good time thank you yeah we really uh, appreciate it man we really really do my my pleasure uh jillian and mario i i you know i'm more than happy to you know come on and share my stuff and you know you two have been fun to talk to and so thank you. Good.